everybody and welcome back to the Cupcake Gemma channel with me Sally and to C&D Soho where we are now open. We've been open for a couple of weeks now and it has been so wonderful to be making cakes, cookies, coffee. Dane, Georgia and the rest of the C&D Soho team have been loving seeing you guys again. So thank you to everyone that's been in and if you're in London and you want to come and get something then do because the cakes are better than ever. So I have managed to steal the kitchen for a couple of hours so I've got to do a really quick recipe which is great because that's what I've got. So today we are going to be making a burnt Basque cheesecake. Now burnt is the most important part of this recipe. So if like me you adore cheesecake but you get a little bit scared making them because to get the perfect kind of New York cheesecake it needs to rise in the oven and it needs to not sink, it needs to not crack, it needs to not burn which is quite difficult, I know that, and even I get a little bit scared making them still. So this is the perfect recipe because we want it to burn, we want it to sink, we want it to crack. It's literally so easy to do. So the first thing we need to do is prepare our cake tin. Now this is actually pretty important because it's messy. <laughs> this whole thing is rustic and messy. Um, and we want to get this kind of like crinkly effect to the outside of our cheesecake, which we're going to do with some crinkled greaseproof paper. So the first thing I've got here is a springform tin, which means that we can get it out nice and easily. So this is ideal. But if you haven't got one, don't worry. Just a regular round tin is going to be fine. And I'm just going to lightly grease the inside with some cake spray here. But you can do this with a bit of oil or butter. That just means my paper's going to stick in nice and easily. So I've got two pieces. The first piece I'm pushing in and we're making it messy. Here goes. So push it in right to the bottom and into the corners and get these nice pleats in there. Fold it over the top as well. You want it to look all scrunchy. So when the first piece is in, you want to grab your second piece of paper and do the exact same but kind of 90 degrees to it. So we've got loads of overhanging paper. And I know this is like the opposite of what I'd normally tell you to do when it's like all about making things neat and pretty. But trust me, this is what we want. And we want it to be overhanging because this cheesecake is going to rise up quite a lot in the oven. So we want to make sure that there's grease proof kind of touching the whole of the edge. So now that that is done, we're just going to pop that to one side and get on with making our cheesecake. So I'm doing this in a stand mixer here, um, but you can do this just by hand or with an electric whisk would be better than by hand. So I'm going to start with some cream cheese, obviously, and I've got a lot. This is 600 grams of cream cheese, which I've had out of the fridge for a couple of hours now so it's room temperature which just helps to make it nice and soft so that is kind of quite important and we're going to put all of that in the mixer so once all of the cheese is in the mixer I'm going to start this going on a medium kind of speed just like this and we're just going to get it going for a couple of minutes just to make sure it's nice and smooth with no lumps in it So once that's looking smooth, I'm just going to scrape it down. Always scrape stuff down when you're using these big stand mixers because they never get everything from the sides or the bottom. And then I'm going to put it back on to the same kind of speed and I'm going to gradually add 225 grams of caster sugar or granulated sugar. Either is fine. So again, give it a little scrape down once the sugar's been in for a couple of minutes and you can see already how the texture is changing. It's gone kind of gloopy, <laughs> which is exactly how we want it. So now we're going to start adding our eggs and in total I've got four eggs. We're going to add them one at a time, keeping the mixer on the same speed that we had it and we're going to add the next egg once the first one is fully incorporated. all of the eggs have incorporated, it's kind of thickened a little bit, we'll go in with the next ingredient. So I'm actually going to add a little pinch of salt, which 
doesn't appear in many recipes for this particular cheesecake, but as you know, I think that salt pulls out loads of flavors. It's gonna enhance that cheesy tanginess perfectly. So I would recommend it, but if you don't wanna do it, that's fine. So next up, this is important and you must do this. This is 300 grams of double cream, which in the States is whipping cream or heavy cream. It's gotta be thick. And that's gonna go all into our cheesecake mixture. And then I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And once that's mixed in, we are gonna turn the mixer off and we're gonna add our final ingredient, which is a little bit of flour. So plain flour, and it's only a smidge, it's 40 grams. So it's important to sieve this through because you don't want it to have any lumps in at all. And I'm actually just gonna stir this through with my spatula. So we're gonna grab back our tin, and all we need to do now is pour all of our cheesecake into our crinkly lined tin. And now it is time to bake this delicious cheesecake. So preheat your oven. This is super, super important all the time when baking, but particularly with this guy, you want it really hot before it goes in. So I've got mine preheated to 200 degrees C, which is really hot. But remember, this is a burnt Basque cheesecake. It needs to go nice and brown on top. I'm gonna put mine in for 50 minutes to one hour. And we want it to be lovely and caramelized and burnt on top. The middle's gonna be a little bit jiggly because that's how we get that lovely kind of custardy kind of flan type center. Um, so you just gotta kind of do this by eye, guys. And then we're gonna take it out and let it cool down for at least an hour. This. Okay, so mine's been in for 50 minutes, and look, if I give it a jiggle, it is pretty jiggly, but that is how I want it, because I want it to be still kind of soft in the middle, but you can see the outsides are a bit stiffer. It's completely caramelized. Let's say burn. it's burnt on top. <laughs> That's how we want it. So now we need to cool this down. So I'm gonna start by cooling it room temperature for one hour and you're gonna see it's gonna sink, but that's fine. That's what we want it to do. It might crack even further again. That's what we want it to do. And after an hour, I'm then gonna put it in the fridge and ideally you'd leave it in for a few hours, maybe even overnight, but I wanna eat this today. So I'm just gonna go one hour room temp, one hour in the fridge. So I'll see you back in a couple of hours so we can eat this. That felt like the longest two hours of my life waiting for this to cool down and it's still a little bit warm but I just can't wait any longer. And you can see, like I said, it's gonna sink down, it's gonna have cracks in it. I know it doesn't look like the most beautiful thing but in a way it does. It's rustic and beautiful and trust me, it's delicious. So let's get this out of the tin and take a closer look. Just look at all this delicious caramelization that we've got going all around the edge. And that really comes from these crinkly bits of baking paper. And it smells amazing. I think we just need to cut into this bad boy. Oh. 
When I cut this, the knife just fell straight through it. It's like the silkiest thing ever, and that looks amazing. Mm. It's like a combination between a cheesecake and a flan. It's kind of got that custardy taste, like texture to it. It's not as kind of fluffy as a regular New York cheesecake. And you get this delicious burnt bit at the top, which really contrasts with the sweetness of the cheesecake. It's like heaven. It's so soft and light. Mm. and incredibly easy with perfect results, right? That was so, so easy. We just bunged it all in the mixer. We wanted it to crack, we wanted it to burn, and it's delicious. Wow. Please, please, please make this. Let me know how you get on over on Instagram. I wanna see all your delicious photos of your cheesecake, so make sure you tag us, hashtag Cupcake Gemma, as well as me, at Sally Dells, and Cupcake Gemma. And if you wanna see what Gemma's up to at home, it's mini, at Mini Cupcake Diaries. Um, and if you're in the area, or if you pop into London, then please come and say hi to us here at Soho. The guys are ready and waiting with their coffees and cakes, ready to greet you here. And we'll be back next week with another recipe for you guys. Until then, I've got an entire burnt bass cheesecake to eat. So leave me do it. Mm.